our old car really needed an upgrade. Now, the folks at 70 My are sponsoring this video to talk about a pair of dash cams. I've been test driving both, and I have some thoughts to share. Uh, first up, our plan in our family, uh, we were gonna try and pick up an electric vehicle this year, but we've decided to put that on hold for just a little bit longer, given the economy, and that it's been really nice not having a car payment. But that means we're tooling around in our little commuter mobile here for a little longer. Even shopping a new car, it's been disappointing pointing how few smaller and mid-sized sedans feature things like dash cams. So buying a new car or upgrading an old car, it's hardware we'd still need to install regardless. The two cameras we're gonna be taking a look at today, we're gonna look at the A800S with the rear camera edition, and we're also checking out the A500S, which is labeled on the box as the 70 My Dash Cam Pro Plus Plus. There's a lot of feature overlap between these two cameras. Now, both of them include the accessories and the cables to install the hardware in your car. A quick tangent, for that installation, my trick is to bring a little power bank so that you can plug that, power the camera while you're setting it up. You don't need to leave your car running the whole time and worry about feeding the cable from your car's electrical socket. I think that's a lot easier. So you can line up the camera on your windshield and then there's an electrostatic sticker. It's so silly because you think of a dash cam and you think we've solved that issue. We know what dash cam should look like. But I'm gonna be praising a few design choices on both of these cameras and something like having a little mount like this is a really good idea. Occasionally, you will need to handle the camera, you know, pry it off of your windshield. You would think that this would be a standard feature on all dash cams, but you would be wrong, not all cameras are like this. And also the included cable, plenty long for most sedans. It's common that these kits also include a little pry tool. You can tuck the cable into the seams of your car's trim. I've done a few of these now. And if you have an inexpensive vehicle like mine, you just have to be really careful around things like airbag covers. Those are designed to pop off easily they won't always reattach. Take your time, go slow, tuck the cable into the squishy bits, you should be fine. Now that I've done a few of these, total setup time was less than a half hour. And once you've routed this power cable all around your car, it's gonna go to the little car charger. It's included in the box and it has a little USB plug on it. 70 My also sells an optional fuse kit to power the setup directly off of your car's electrical. We'll talk about this a little more in just a bit. Both cameras, the hardware is really well laid out. One of the main differences between the two, the A800S has a larger screen than this A500S, but both have the same four button navigation and a power button so that you can fire up the screen when you're driving around. A micro USB cable connects the cameras to power. There's an AV port to attach a rear camera, and both of these use micro SD cards to record and loop footage. The body wedge shape helps line up the display for the driver and tucks it out of the way if you're wanting to mount it more behind like a rear view mirror. And the camera housing rotates so that you can get the right angle on the road. Pretty standard stuff. The A800S kit I was sent included the rear camera and the A500S can use that same camera. You can buy it as part of a kit or you can buy it separately if you just wanna set up the camera first and install a rear camera later. And the other main difference between the two, the A800S can record from the front camera up to 4K resolution. The A500S records a squarer video at a resolution of 2592 by 1944. It's above 1080p resolution, and the rear cameras for both are gonna support 1080p. 70 My has apps for your phone, so you can get a real-time view of your camera, you can download recordings, and you can also upgrade the camera firmware. It's a really simple setup, but I prefer this to some of the more complicated Dash apps or, or the apps that also include social media services or video editing tools. Some of that stuff can be fun, but I kind of feel like car tech should be more straightforward. Also, connecting over Wi-Fi, the file transfers are a little slow. You're moving some pretty high resolution clips, even from the A500S. So of course, you can always pull the memory card out of the camera and you can view or transfer those files faster if you're just sitting at a computer. The controls on the camera are thankfully simple too. You're not gonna wanna fiddle with the camera when it's 
mounted on your windshield or while you're driving. But if something happens and you want to make sure you save a clip as an event, these big buttons are easy to reach up and feel. They're very clear tactile landmarks. Also, there's simple tracking with the G sensor that's built into this, where the camera will detect motion or accidents and automatically record an event. I think the G sensor is a little sensitive. I triggered it once just going over a rough driveway, but I'd rather have it than not. It's another peace of mind that in the middle of a bad situation, you probably won't have to think about handling your dash cam. Both cameras have built-in GPS. Adding that data to keep track of your routes is awesome, but I would love to see these cameras add something like a simple database feature. So, so we could offload this information if we were trying to get better mileage tracking to report at our taxes at the end of the year. And with a camera system like this, it adds some simple guidance for the driver. Now, my old little commuter car does not have any fancy lane guidance or forward motion detection. You're sitting at a light and the light turns green and the car in front of you goes, but maybe you were distracted by something. Vehicle ahead motion detected. But now my inexpensive commuter card does have some of those features just by adding an inexpensive dash cam. Video quality on both cameras is very good. Using Sony camera sensors, these are a nice upgrade. They're a nice step up from the older 1080p options that I've played with. You know, we get a bit more clarity to see what's going on, better dynamic range in those videos, better low light capabilities, especially as we're moving from sort of daylight to dusk. You really want good data if there's a traffic event, it'll help when you file an insurance claim. But for both of these cameras being pretty good, the A800S, steps us up to a larger image file. It's a higher resolution. It's a slightly nicer presentation. From having used some older 1080p cameras, the A500S is a champ, but if you want a little bit better clarity for, say, reading around license plate numbers, that's where you'd maybe want to consider stepping up. Rounding out some of this tech, there's a small battery built in to help you finish your recordings, move buffer data to the storage card. The camera won't run for long on that battery. It's really only there to handle data if there's a sudden event where the camera might lose power. It makes sure your recordings will be saved and that the file doesn't get corrupted. Now, if you opt for that previously mentioned, the optional fuse kit, the cameras can go into a low power state and the G sensor is used for parking surveillance. 70 My will record any bumps or nudges your car experiences when you're away. And that means you might catch a clip of someone if your car is broken into or vandalized or if it's it's hit by another car while you're parked. The installation on this fuse kit isn't particularly difficult, but you do want to be careful when you're messing with your car's electrical. If you're concerned about any of that, getting this installed at a mechanic really shouldn't be that expensive. But if you take your time, pay attention, maybe look up a YouTube tutorial, it's really not that hard getting this all set up. And if you'd like, I can shoot a separate video later on just looking at some of my experiences, because I've now played with a couple different options for fuse power on internal car accessories like these dashboard cams. If you'd like to see something like that, drop a comment down below and maybe smash that bell icon on your way down to the comments. All right, and lastly, just to tie this back to the hardware and some of the compliments I really wanna pay the design, you know, I said there are these great little touches. You've got the wedge shape for mounting on your windshield and the sticker with the mount in the cradle so that you can easily pop the camera off. This one is kind of funny, but it's surprisingly well thought out that the connectors for power and video stack and fit together. They right angle away from the SD card for easier access than if those cables pointed straight out of the camera body, and they point more towards the car's roof so that you can directly tuck the cables into your trim. Again, setting up this camera, you would expect that most dash cams would just be designed that way, but I can assure you not all dash cams are designed that nice because all wrapped up, these are fantastic features to include in this class of product at this price. The cameras are not that expensive. The Pro Plus Plus, really called the A500S that I'm holding here, starts at $59.99. And if you add the rear camera and the hardware kit, tops out at $90. The A800S starts at $102 and tops out with the full kit for $136. That's pretty good for a simple car upgrade 
and a little extra peace of mind. And I'm about to hit you with the infomercial, y'all, but wait, there's more! The folks at 70My have included a promo code that can cut another 20% off those prices. I've got that promo down in the comments. 20% off is a pretty good deal. I really like these cameras. I don't have the A800S on my desk right now because I've got it installed in our little car. I don't think I'm gonna be removing it. I really like that dash cam. And I'd love to hear if you've had similar experiences installing this kind of hardware in an older car, upgrading an older car, making it a little bit more current technology, or if you've had to install something like this in a newer car just because it's so frustrating to me that these things are not standard features in new automobiles. Drop me some comments down below. There's a chat that we can get into and hopefully folks will be able to make a better purchasing decision on some of this gear. This gear isn't as common as I really think it should be. And we can always put a little bit more pressure on our local governments and our elected officials to include things like dashboard cams. I feel people investing in this kind of hardware should be getting some financial incentives for using it. Maybe a break on your auto insurance. I've got the links below for more information on the cameras. You can smash that bell icon on your way down to the comments. And again, a huge thank you to 70 My for sponsoring this video. It feels pretty good sprucing up our old car. We're, we're teaching this old dog a few new tricks. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has been absolutely fantastic. And I've been having a lot of fun kind of straying into some other tech sectors, some other gadgets and gizmos that we could be talking about. Really appreciate all the folks that are clicking on links in my descriptions, visiting my home site, somegadgetguy.com. Maybe you're shopping a little merch. Or if you're joining the list of names, scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the web. I'm at some gadget guy around the various social media sites. I'm spending a lot of time these days on the Mastodons. Uh, I'm sharing my photos on Flickr. And uh, I'm hosting my podcast on the Twitch, but we'll see how long that lasts with all the drama there too. But a little less so these days on the Twitters and the Facebooks and the Instagrams. And I will catch you all on the next video.